I've been a video game collector since about 2006, and today I have a, a lot of games. Maybe even too many, if there is such a thing. That's right, jokes over, these aren't my games. This is my wife's <clears throat> collection. Except uh, this one. I don't know what she's doing with this. My collection is bigger and better. So big, in fact, that if I were to spend five hours a day systematically playing each one of these games one after the other, assuming I spent an average of eight hours completing each game, it would take me somewhere in the neighborhood of seven years to get through them all. By the way, there's a big emphasis on if there, uh, because that's not how I've been using my time. Now, before you call me a collectard, let me just say that I bought every one of these games with the intention of one day playing it. But let's be honest, there are a few titles here that I really only ended up with because I was aware of how uncommon they were, and I was able to get them pretty cheaply. Those games have obviously been put on the back burner. But it's finally time to knock the dust off some of these games because their time to shine has finally arrived. Anyone familiar with shopping at Goodwill knows that video game prices at these stores can be a bit hit or miss. Sometimes they practically give these things away for $3 a piece, other times they are ludicrously, laughably overpriced. But Goodwill, when you blindly price a stack of NES games for $20 a piece, sometimes you inadvertently give someone like me a deal. Faria. Or Faria. Uh, Faria? Faria? However you pronounce it, it's a pretty safe bet that this game is part of the role-playing game family. That battery save is a pretty dick giveaway, and the cover certainly looks pretty rpg -y. Now, full disclosure, RPGs aren't really my cup of tea. I, I haven't really played a lot of them, and I honestly just don't have the attention span to play games longer than... than... What are we talking about? That being said, I did play Dragon Warrior quite a bit back in the day, and I really liked that game. Kinda. Alright, now's a good time to tell you that whenever I have the opportunity, I always enter my name as Rob. I just like the sound of it. But why are the controls so damn touchy? Oh, whoops. <laughs> In this game, I should be known as Rob did the The hell is it, an alien? I thought for sure this was gonna have a medieval setting. Is that the bad guy? Ugh. Is that the bad guy? All right, here's the game. How do I start having fun? Maybe this guy knows. You there, NPC. Is it pronounced Faria or Fa- Never mind, I'll come back later. Let's see if anyone else around here knows what's happening. Well, word on the street is that a princess has been kidnapped and I should go to the castle. All right, I'll look into it. But first I'm gonna buy myself a dirk and a pelt. Hopefully a dirk is a kind of sword. All right, this must be the castle, and this thing must be the king. Why are all these people so hideous? I didn't say that. Rob did the da We're supposed to be on the same team here, so in the future, let's wait until we're actually asked to save a princess before he just volunteers for something. At least find out what he's offering first. The princess is... Caterpie? This is your fault. So far, if I were to sum up my impressions of this game in one word, it would be green. Everything is overwhelmingly green. The towns are green, the overworld is green, and the battle screens are like really, really green. Oh yeah, the battle screens. So in true RPG fashion, your progress is constantly interrupted by random encounters. Here the gameplay switches to something bearing too much of a resemblance to Legend of Zelda to be coincidental and you grind for money and experience against skeletons and, and alligators and um, most of these monsters die with only a hit or two but it's much harder to hit these things than really seems necessary. They move around really erratically and you don't get any kind of invincibility period when you take damage so it's really easy to get completely overpowered when too many enemies come at you at once. 
I gotta say, this game is really unappealing. Visually, I mean. It's not just the unbalanced color palette. Everything is just unpleasant to look at. The enemy design is completely nonsensical, and the other characters inhabiting this world are astoundingly ugly. Especially this guy. Man, I am fighting off boredom here. But I'm, I'm gonna give this game a chance. Like I said, I don't play RPGs too often, so I'm not even gonna pretend that I have the slightest idea what I'm... what I'm... What I'm doing, hey, let's go beat the game. What forest, this forest? What the, what the hell? Hey, geez, how do I get, I, how do I get out of here? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, maybe this is the forest they mean. There she is. Oh, you got me. All right, let's see what's in this tower. Hopefully it's what's left of my dwindling interest. So once again, I'm sensing the lingering presence of a faint Zelda influence. Although to be fair, it's not a complete Zelda clone. I mean, you get a map in Zelda's dungeons. Uh, you don't get one in this game though, so that's that's different. In Faria, you just kind of wander around aimlessly until you inevitably get swarmed by enemies and sent back to the beginning of the game. You know, this just isn't working out. Don't take this personally, this is my problem, not yours. I just think you're a bit crap. Now this next game is allegedly one of the rarest games in my entire collection. That's right, it might possibly be even more rare than Little Samson, I don't know. Mario's Time Machine. This game came out on the NES in 1994. To give some perspective of what a late release that was, that was about three years after the launch of the Super Nintendo, and just two years before the launch of the N64. It's a pretty safe bet that the NES wasn't exactly a hot commodity at that point. But as you can see, someone really, really loved this game. Either that or they really hated it. Who's to say? All right, well, the plot here is that Bowser has built a museum and has filled it with a number of artifacts that he has stolen from history using his time machine, which I'm assuming he also built. Again, this is Bowser we're talking about. He's also kidnapped Yoshi, which is the real motivation Mario needs to get this game moving, because no one cares about a bunch of crusty old relics, am I right? So the object of the game is to reclaim the stolen artifacts from the Koopa Troopas and return each one to its original place in history. The first object I find is a torch. Alright, how do I... How do I pick it up? Oh, by pressing down. Why not? Then you hop into Bowser's time machine and choose a destination from this... This list of completely nondescript dates. I, I guess I'll try returning the torch to 776 BC because... I don't know, cavemen? 776 BC is represented by what certainly appears to be a modern-day Olympic stadium. So clearly this is ancient Greece. Okay, now that I have a bit of context, I guess that looks like an Olympic torch. So here you go! That's the wrong location for that item, Mario. Reading all the clues will help. Read the clues? Are you trying to teach me stuff? I feel like you're trying to teach me stuff. Of course I am. This is an educational game. Try hitting your head on one of those little blocks over there. Get up there! Why is it so hard to make this jump? Getting all fired up is your best bet, Mario. So I need the torch. Yeah, I already kind of figured that out on my own. You want to tell me where the torch goes? There is a special reason why Greeks count their years by four. So... no? When you're ready to give it another go, please return with the correct item. Okay, let's try this again. Apparently it's not enough to just have the correct item for the stage. You also need to put it in a particular spot. Now the game wants you to believe that reading the clues will help you find the right place to return each artifact, but none of these clues seem to be much help. 
So I'm going to take a stab in the dark and guess that it goes here. That was a lucky guess. For some of these stages, the solution is simple enough that you can just intuit on your own where these things go without needing to bother with the clues at all. If you aren't reading the clues, you aren't playing the game correctly. <laughs> okay, settle down there, Basil. For example, once you discover the Wright Brothers airfield, it's pretty obvious that the propeller goes on the plane. Likewise, the light bulb goes to this, uh, this lamp in Thomas Edison's workshop because that's where Edison invented the light bulb. And the apple goes under this tree because that's where Isaac Newton invented gravity. That is the wrong location for that item, Mario. What? Maybe try reading all the clues. It may help. The penalty for guessing wrong is pretty severe. You're sent back to the entrance of the museum, and then you have to chase down the turtles and collect the item all over again. It's not that any of that is especially difficult, it's just that it doesn't take long before you start to get the impression that the game is deliberately wasting your time. Okay, well I'm getting frustrated now, so I'm gonna call this one. Giving up, are you? I should have expected as much from such a... Sorry game, learning about stuff just isn't my thing. Hold on, hold on. I'm not about to let some stupid kid's game get the best of me. So you may have noticed that there are enemies wandering around these stages. They are no threat to you, they don't do any damage. The real enemy in this game is the controls. Forget about the intuitive and dare I say perfect play control in the other Mario games. You know, the real ones. In this game, there's no nuance, no sense of weight or momentum. Mario has only one jump height, and he handles really weird, especially when changing directions. You have to be careful while running around these battle screens, or else you'll slide right into one of the pipes and get sent back to the entrance of the museum. Oh, and don't bother trying to slide under a block by running and ducking. It doesn't work. Do you have any idea how much the Mario license cost? We had to cut corners somewhere. Fighting the controls to access all the clues ends up being the main obstacle in the game. A lot of them are barricaded behind blocks that you either need to break or spin to get through, which occasionally requires some precision jumping. Except the single height jumping mechanics don't allow you to make precision jumps. Look, there's nothing wrong with having a character with a fixed jump height. Lots of games do it. But the stage structure needs to complement the character's jump ability. Look at this. I can't make this jump without landing on the platform above me. I really hope you can make it up here. I have something very important to tell you. This is as low as I could jump. How am I supposed to get through this opening? That's bad, bad game design. Are you even trying? Honest question. Have you ever played something called a video game before? Yes? All right, this clue better be worth it. The Berlin Wall was built by the communist government of East Germany to halt escape from East Berlin to the West Berlin. That's it. I, I can't do it. Go ahead. Switch it off. No one will blame you. The game is designed for children, after all. But there's no shame in admitting it's too tough for you. Mario's Time Machine essentially amounts to a guessing game where you pick up an item from the Koopa Troopas and bring it to one of the time periods with no indication of where each year takes place. So you end up arbitrarily selecting a year and hoping that you either have the right item or that you'll at least be able to decipher from the clues what item you're supposed to have. The problem is, many of these clues aren't terribly clear about what artifact you should have or where you're supposed to put it when you find it. They're clues. They're meant to be a little opaque. Otherwise, they'd just be answers, wouldn't they? I've picked up the physics equation, E equals MC squared, and I've brought it to what I'm assuming is the correct stage, Albert Einstein's classroom. Keep searching for the formula to success, Mario. If you find it, be sure to write it on the chalkboard near the empty table. You mean this empty table? That is the wrong location for that item, Mario. Reading all the damn clues. I read the clues. This is the only chalkboard next to an empty table. Well, you weren't standing very close to it, were you? I was right next to it. How exact are you expecting me to be? Hmm, fancy that.
Once you return all the artifacts provided by the room, Mario boards up the door. But the years that you've completed stay in the Time Machine's menu. So as you get deeper into the game, you have to remember not only what years coincide with each setting, but also which years have been completed and which ones still need items returned to them. And if that sounds like a lot of boring information to keep track of, it is! But I did it! In spite of the tedious, mind-numbing gameplay, the utterly useless clue mechanic, the completely thoughtless stage design, and the controls which could be described at best as flawed. I returned all the items to their original time periods, and the only thing I learned from this educational game is that I don't like learning about stuff! Before you go, let me just say that I've quite enjoyed our time together today. Shut up! Now, now, no need to get tetchy. You beat the game, didn't you? All that remains now is to answer just a few questions before you can go on to rescue Yushi from Bowser's evil clutches. What is this? There's a test at the end? Oh, did I not mention? Huh, how silly of me. What does the title Mahatma mean? I don't know. Have a guess, then. Uh, Great Sire. That is incorrect. Perhaps you should read those clues again. I can see you're upset. But you only have yourself to blame. I've been trying to give you the answers this entire time. There. See? You learned something. Congratulations. Hey, that's a different question! Yes, I changed the questions, of course. This game wouldn't be very replayable if the test was the same every time, would it? Come on, this one is so easy that even you should be able to answer it. When was the Berlin Wall? I know what it says, I can read. Oh, can you? Then you should have no trouble going back to find the correct answer. No, I'm not playing through your janky stages anymore. What do you think you're doing? Go find the correct answer, immediately! If the questions are randomized, then it's only a matter of time before I get one that I know. You have to answer three correctly. In a row. Fine. Everyone knows that one. Another lucky guess. Well, it seems that my attempts to impart some wisdom weren't completely in vain. I suppose a thank you would be too much to expect. Ooh, you're such a poor sport. Okay, I'm gonna get straight to the point this time. The next game is Galaxy 5000, and I found it in a lot of random NES cards that I bought off eBay, back when you could still do that kind of thing without selling a kidney. I had never heard of it before I pulled it out of the box, and even now I'm not entirely sure what kind of game it is. I'm gonna guess maybe a space shooter. Just please be good. Please be good. Oh, it's a... it's a racing game? Oh, okay, yep, I guess that should have been obvious. I get it, uh, haha. <laughs> Not Indy 500, it's Galaxy 5000. Very cute. Now, if I didn't know any better, I would have guessed that this game was developed by Rare. It reminds me a lot of RC Pro-Am. Now, I don't especially like RC Pro-Am. Or Rare. Or racing games. But I'd like to think I generally know a good game when I see one, I'm not made of stone. And honestly, this game is pretty good. You work your way through the solar system competing in planetary races with what the game calls Turbocraft. Each planet has four races to complete and, ideally, you do want to win these races, but survival is your top priority. 
Whoever organized these events clearly wanted everyone dead, because the tracks are filled with obstacles like cannons, spikes, and mines, as well as the prerequisite speed boosts and jump pads. The basic track for each planet is the same for all four of its races, but the variety of these elements can significantly change the way you negotiate the track from race to race. So it certainly doesn't feel like you're running through the same circuit four times in a row. You can steer around these hazards or jump over them, but your ship also has some firepower at its disposal, which you can use against the obstacles or the other racers. Your reward for surviving each race is cash money, which varies depending on your final rank, your time, how many bonus items you picked up, and how much damage you dished out during the race. You can spend your earnings to purchase new vehicles or repair damage to your current one. Spending your money wisely is key. Do you keep saving up for that next ship, or do you fix up the one you already have? The higher tier turbocraft have better handling than your starting ship, which you definitely will want once the tracks start getting more elaborate. If you spend your money completely restoring your vehicle in between each race, it'll take forever to purchase the next ship. On the other hand, a frugal approach to maintenance will let you upgrade your ship faster, but then you run the risk of losing your current vehicle during a race. In that event, you revert immediately back to your previous ship, which will still be at whatever damage level you left it at. If you lose your stock turbocraft, it's game over. So for maximum efficiency, you want to come in first in every race, collect all the bonuses, destroy every obstacle, shoot down all your opponents, and never, ever, ever take damage. See, it's easy. Now, Galaxy 5000 is not an amazing game. It's not even the best racing game I've ever played. But there is a lot of crap in the NES library, so it's nice to find that there are still some good games out there left to discover, even if they're only pretty good. And besides, today I am reevaluating my standards a bit, so all I can say is thank you, Galaxy 5000, for being better than these two games. Yeah.